Okay, uh, welcome to this lab. So today we will learn that how we can create maps and also how we can design maps uh, in ArcGIS Pro. So, so we kind of have learned how to create some spatial visualizations uh, in the previous labs. However, those maps are not considered professional maps as we didn't include those required uh, map elements. So this time we are going to create maps and also we are going to design the layout and also we are going to add those required uh, map elements. So first, let's download the data that we need to use. So we are going to use the same data that we used in the previous labs. So the first one is a mass shooting in 2019. Okay, uh, so we can find that go to portal and also all portal and you can see that mass shooting 2019 has been uploaded by me, WERXX, and Scott GMU. So let's drag that one to our project. And next, let's also um, download the population data. So let's go to Living Atlas, and let's just search population state. And the second one, ACS population variables boundaries, which uh, is hosted by S3. So we are going to use that one as well. So let's drag that one to our um, project. Okay, uh, as we always did, so let's first export those downloaded data, uh, those data uh, into our local uh, geo database. So let's first export mass routing, export features, and we're going to export that one to our uh, local geo database. Okay, so you can see by default, it will be sent to our local geo database, um, project geo database. So let's call it mass shooting VA. And this time we just want the mass shootings in Virginia. So let's make a query. So let's click a new expression where we want to see the state is equal to Beijing. Okay, and let's keep all the fields, which is fine. And if you remember that the mass routing is geocoded from a CSV table, so it does not have a PCS. So here, let's go to environments and let's define a PCS. So let's say that we want to use the same PCS as the state population. So here in the population, downloaded from the living address we have population state level county level and also track level uh, so we tell ArcGIS Pro that we're going to use the same coordinates as state okay and now everything looks correct and we can run this export okay and now the mass reading has been exported successfully to our uh, project geo database so let's remove the one that from the ArcGIS Online. And next, uh, let's export the population and the state level. Okay, so here you can see we exported uh, the master team Virginia only. So to export the population and the state level, so let's again right click the state and let's export features. And for the output, let's say we call it state. And for the fields, so for the state, we just want to use the, the polygons of those states um, to create a locator map. So let's um, remove all the other variables. Let's say let's remove everything that like population, etc. So we want to make sure that we keep at least we keep the name of the state. Okay, and then we can remove the other fields and we export that one to a state. Um, called state feature in our uh, local geo database. That's right. Okay, so now we have the state that's been exported. Uh, let's also export the county. So let's say export. Uh, for the county, uh, we, we uh, let's call it POP county. And for the county, we, we just want population, total population of all uh, of all counties in Virginia only. So let's do the same thing. So let's say 
um, expression and a state on um, which is in Code Virginia. Okay, and let's keep the total population. So let's remove all the other fields that beneath total population. Okay, so all the other fields that beneath total population. Okay, uh, so we have the county name and our state name and also total population. And let's run it. Okay, so now the population of all the counties in Virginia has been exported. So let's remove uh, the original data. So now we have all the data that is ready. So if we go to the catalog of this um, project, and if we open the geo database, and then we can see we have three layers. And meanwhile, if we open the maps, we can see we have one map. So that is the map that we are working now. And let's change this map properties. Okay, so let's first, let's create um, a locator map. Okay, so that locator map is going to show, will show, will highlight um, the position of the Virginia. And because it is a locator map, so I think the, we're not going to uh, show any degrees, uh, we're going to, not going to show the narrow the distance, so it's just used as a reference. Uh, so I think the unit degree will be fine. However, I just do want to highlight that we can also define the coordinates for this map. Okay, so that will actually re uh, determine uh, that how the map will look like. So right now we can see it is using WGS 1984. Uh, so if we say we want to use this one from the layers, so uh, the same coordinates as all the other layers, so we can switch that. Let's say OK. OK, uh, you may notice that the map has been a little bit narrower. OK, um, so that's because we just changed the coordination for the map. OK, and because this is locator map, so we don't need the mass shootings in VA and also we don't need mass all the counties. OK, so the purpose of this map is that we want to highlight the location of Virginia. So let's also remove those uh, base maps. And we want to distinguish Virginia from other states. Um, so if we open the attribute table, we can see that, okay, so all the states have its names, okay? And we can see that we also have the, uh, the areas in, in square meters because we just changed the, uh, the display coordinates. Uh, so we can give all states a different color, okay, based on their name. Um, but that is not the way we want because we just want to highlight Virginia. Okay, so what we're going to, going to do is that we are going to add a, a new field. So let's open attribute and say add new field. So this field will help us to distinguish whether or not that is Virginia. So let's call it East and score VA. And the date type is long integer, that's fine. So let's save that field. And next, once that field has been added, um, we can go to the attribute table. Okay, so now if we go to attribute table, and we can see that this new field has none values because it does not have any information. So let's uh, right click on this column and let's do the field calculate. Okay, remember we did that when we calculated uh, the population density. So let's give it a default value of zero. So that means all the states will have a, a zero um, value in this field. Okay, so that includes uh, Virginia. Okay, so now you can see all the states now have a value of zero. And next, let's select Virginia. So you can select Virginia by go to map and I'll select the attribute. Or you can go to attribute table and just select that record. And at the bottom, let's switch to show the selected records. 
So there's only one record being selected. And now we again right click this field. So now we're going to calculate the field based on the selected rows of only, so that Virginia. So, so now we assign a new value for one to Virginia. Okay, uh, so now we can see that Virginia has its VA field has value one. And if we go back to the table, attribute table, we can see all the other states have zero value, value zero, and only V have has the value of one. Okay, so that is what we want. Let's open the close attribute table and also go to map and also clear the selection. And next, we're going to change the colors of this map. So let's go to the appearance and go to the symbology. So here you can see we can create uh, unique values. We can create graduated colors, graduated symbols, unclassed, uh, unclassed colors, proportional symbols, dot density. Uh, we can also create uh, non-spatial visualizations, so like the charts. So for this one, we're going to create a new unique values because we only have two field, uh, only have two values um, in that field. So here we're going to choose is VA. Okay, and you can see we only have two values, zero and also one. One is VA and also zero is all the other states. And we can change the color. So for example, we want to highlight VA. So we'll give all the color, all the other states a cool color or gray color. Um, and also we will give the V a red color or some color that is um, warm. Okay, so go to properties and for the color, a code color. So I'm going to say I will use this gray. 200 percentage and let's apply and now if I go back and for VA and let's say I want to use a dark red and say apply okay and I think that's it um, I'm pretty happy with this one so let me let's save this project so now we have done our first map, which is a locator map. So let's go ahead and create our second map. So if we go to project, right click, and let's say we want to create a new map. And again, let's say we want to um, change the properties. So this will be a semantic map, and we're going to use the same TCS, that's fine. And so this one, let's call it mass shooting. And let's drag the population of all the counties in VA to the map. And let's create a population density map. So this time we click POP county and our symbology. And we are going to use a car, we are going to create a core class map of here we call it graduated colors. So let's create that one. And for the field, so if you remember that we created um, this map earlier. So uh, in the previous lab when we create uh, created the population density, we actually calculated the population density field. But here actually we can use the total population as a field. And instead of calculating the density, so we can choose the normalization field as the area. So we can use um, uh, this area of the land, okay, square meters. Okay, so now we can see the number of population per square meters. Okay, uh, if you are not happy with this unit, then I guess probably you need to recalculate and manually to calculate population density. So, so if you want to do that in a in an easy way, so um, that that's this one. And you can see here you can also choose a percentage of total. So that's that that will be calculated dynamically, and that is also pretty cool.
Okay, and classification method. So we mentioned there are four methods, uh, natural break, point tail, equal intervals, and our st standard deviations. And also you can also manually um, classify your data or you can based on the area of the start area. So here let's use natural break. And make sure that you choose no more than five classes. And for the color, so I'm going to use um, a dark red or dark blue, so probably this one. Okay. And so that is my population density. Uh, and here I'm going to change the headings. So actually, if I just, um, just left click and I call it population density. Okay, so now I have my population density map. And next, I'm going to drag the, the mass routines. Okay, so here we have several points. And I'm going to create a graduated symbol map to show the size that number of people being injured. So I'm going to select the mass routines field, the layer, go to symbology, and I'm, I'm going to choose Oh, sorry, I'm going to choose the proportional symbols. Okay, um, graduated symbols give you more controls of the size of your um, symbols on the map. So here I'm going to choose uh, the proportional symbol map, which essentially I believe is similar to the graduated symbol map. Um, here I'm going to visualize the injured. Okay, and I'm not going to normalize it. And the unit is unknown because it's the number of people being injured. And here you can adjust the size. Okay, so for example, the minimal will be 4. And the maximal, let's choose 20. Okay. And now I'm happy with the size and the template. So this is where you can change the colors and also the shape, etc. So here, let's say I want to use uh, orange. Okay, and hit apply. Okay, that's not bad. Um, and also number of classes. So right on the left, you can see that here by default, there are five classes, which I think is too much. Okay, so let's say I want just three classes will be fine. Three. Or just manual tab three. Okay, so one, five, ten. Okay, that's nice. And next, so I think the, the, the base map, I want to change the base map as well. So if I go to map and also base map, and here you can see there are several base maps. So I'm going to use this dark gray. Okay. And I don't like those labels. So, I mean, the labels on the base map, so I just uncheck this work word dark gray reference. Um, but I do want to label the counties. So if I check this one, mass routines, and go to label, and you can see by default, they, they label the, the time. So again, I go to labeling properties. And here I want to choose this one. So I delete the time and also I bring the county name and I hit apply. Okay, so now you can see we have all the counties being labeled. Um, I believe we can also change the colors. Okay, so if we go to symbol and appearance, and the size, let's say we want a little bit bigger size. And also the color of the text. Um, let's say we want to use similar to the, uh, say a green probably. Let's see how that looks like. Again, you can customize your own color 
uh, and also uh, I think that prop is too big. Uh, so let's say prop tail will be fine. You can choose your own colors. Uh, you don't need necessarily to follow my uh, colors here. Okay. Uh, so that is my master team map. Um, so now we have all the maps that are ready. So we next, we are going to create our layout. Oh, sorry, we still need one more step. So let's create a chart. Okay, uh, let's also change the, the heading. So that is the number of injured. Okay, so let's also create a chart. So chart is a non-spatial visualization. Uh, so let's say based on the mass routines, and uh, let's create a calendar heat chart where we want to see the temporal patterns of the mass routines. Uh, so here the date will be the incident date. And for the aggregations, uh, let's say we want the total of the people being injured. Okay. And the color, so let's say we want the same color as we used on the um, in the background, answer uh, population density. And for the non data, I want to use white color. All right. Okay. So that is my chart. So let, let's save that one. Um, you can also change the size um, of those uh, taxes. It's, for example, if we go to the format, um, the text size. Okay, so that is 16, which I think is pretty large. All right. Okay, so now we have everything ready. So we have the chart, we have locate map, and also we have a, a semantic map. Okay, so, so for on this semantic map, we have the uh, core class map and also a proportional symbol map. So next, let's say we want to combine everything together. So that is where we need to design the layout. So let's go to insert. And here, let's say we want to insert a layout. And so if you want to print your map later on, so you have to choose um, the true size of your layout. So here, since I'm going to just export that one as a PDF document, so I can choose a little bit bigger size. So let's say I want this one, a landscape ANSIC. Okay, so now I have this my layout. So in the layout view, so you can design your layout. For example, where do you want to put your each uh, maps or each visualization and also the other map elements. One nice thing that is that you can see you have those grids or those guidelines. So you can also add guidelines that can help you uh, to control that where do you want to put your um, your visualizations. So let, let me add some guidelines. And also you can adjust those guidelines. Well, uh, you you do have to have an idea that in, in mind that how to design your the layout. So, okay. So my idea is that I want to put this place to to uh, to put my map. I want to use this space to uh, for the locate map. This space for the um, semantic map, and this space for the uh, for the chart. So that is my design. Okay, um, so now I'm, I'm happy with this layout. So let's say we want to insert those maps. So in ArcGIS, uh, they call it map frame. So if I click this map frame, you can see that uh, those maps are now available here. So let's insert the first one, the mass shooting one. And now you can drag the box to define the extent of your map and the release. 
and your map will be showing up here. Okay, uh, so if say if you want to zoom in like what I want to do now, what you need to do is that you have to activate that map. So I believe that is in the layout. Okay, so let's say we want we want to change something that within this map. So I have activated this map, and now you can see the layout has been graded out. So now you can zoom in, uh, zoom out. Okay. And also you can use those uh, navigators and you can put uh, adjust uh, where do you want to uh, put your map. So for example, you can also move the map so within this uh, frame. Uh, so once you're happy with that, uh, you can close that activation. So now your map is locked. Um, what you can do next is that you can, uh, we can add the other map elements. So for example, if we go to insert, uh, we can insert north arrow, okay? Uh, so you can choose any north arrow that you like. So here I like this one. And you can drag uh, the frame of the north arrow and you can move it. Okay. And you can also change the format. So let's say you go to format and we want to change the color to be white because we're using a dark background. Okay, so that is a north arrow. And this is a relatively uh, small scale or uh, larger scale because we are looking at the state. So we, we can use a north arrow. Um, let's also insert the scale bar. Again, there are several types of scale bars and you can choose the one that you like. You can choose these the miles or the uh, kilometers. Okay, so I'm good, going to use this one. And I'm going to again drag where I want to put this scale bar. Uh, again, you can change the format. So for example, here we can choose a size. Uh, let's choose a bigger one. And the color. So here I'm also going to use white. And because and also for the line, the color the color for the line. Okay, and also the width. Okay. Uh, so one thing that uh, I highly recommend you do is that uh, pay attention to the numbers on the divisions. So here you can see we have one. Uh, for five, so 145 kilometers. That is a very awkward number because it's not a whole number, so it's very hard to make comparisons. So you can, what you can do, you can adjust the length of the scale bar so that hopefully you can reach uh, a whole number. Okay, for example here, uh, so 300 is definitely better than 290. Okay, or you can right click and also go to the properties and where you can manually change the divisions. Okay, okay, and see so now I'm happy with this scale bar. And next, let's go to insert. Um, because I'm using different size and those colors, so I have to add the legend. So let's click legend and also again drag the areas where I want to put the legend. Uh, as always, you can change the format. So let's say I want to choose color to be white and I want to increase the size okay, of all the, all the words on the legend. And also you can also choose that what item you want to show. So for example here, I don't want to show the layer name. I just want to keep the headings. So you can go to show properties. And here you can just uncheck the layer name. Okay. And you can also customize uh, your legend more. So and here I'm, I think I'm happy with that now. Okay. Uh, so this is the where I'm going to for my uh, uh, symmetric map. And since I'm here, so I'm going to also add that chart. So 
uh, remember that the chart is from this uh, mass routing layer. Okay. And next we go to insert and we can also insert the chart. You can see that the chart is available and you can drag the area area where do you want to place your chart and you can wait a few seconds so that the chart will be showing up here okay and that's uh that's a chart uh, probably i i need to put that one a little bit higher okay um All right. Okay. Perfect. Uh, next, let's add the locate map. So locate map is from different maps. So let's go to insert data frame and let's choose this, this locate map. Uh, in this case, in this time, we're not going, going to use a uh, rectangle. So here I want to use a circle. Uh, so here I'm going to drag a circle, which is prop is will be here like this, the size will be like this. And let's, let me put that to, to, uh, to the, within those uh, guidelines. And you see uh, it is still updating. So let's be patient. Okay, nice. So now the locate map is showing up here. Um, as as we did earlier, so if you want to change uh, the map within this map frame, so you have ac activated that map, so everything else will be graded out, so you can move the map a little bit, and you can also zoom in or zoom out. Okay. Okay. Uh, next, let's say go um, go to layout. And let's say we want to uh, close that activation. Uh, you can also add an uh, extend uh, indicator so that, for example, here I want to highlight where Virginia is, or, although it's already highlighted. So uh, if you want to do it with a different way, so you can just say, OK, I want to add extend indicator of the date frame. And now you can see we just added a black box. And of course, you can change uh, the color. Okay, so for example, I can use uh, a yellow one and let's say apply. Okay, so two points. Okay, so that you can also highlight where your start area is. Okay, which is kind of unnecessary in this case, but just let you know that we can also do that. And also remember that for the map, uh, the scale information and also direction are required. So even it is a very small scale map like this one. So for the small scale map, uh, in addition, instead of using uh, north arrow, also the scale bars, we can also use the grids. Okay, so let's we can also use grids to indicate the directions and also indicate the uh, the distance. Uh, so here I'm going to use uh, this one, gray horizontal label, vertical. So here we just added the vertical, so the horizontal label vertical, which uh, shows the latitude, longitude, which also tell you the directions and also distance. Okay, uh, so now our map um, looks um, pretty good. And the next, we can also add um, some titles, like the texture information. So here, let's say we go to the text. Let's add a title. Uh, so I leave this space for the title. And you can now just type directly here. And now you can give the title. Let's say mass shooting in VA. Okay. And you can change the symbols. So 
so where you can um, let's see appearance right so you can change the font uh, you can also change the size okay uh, so let's say I, I just want to give it 120 and I should hit apply here but anyway okay um, so that is a title uh, we can also add the other text information so for example we can add dynamic text where you can add credits descriptions if you provide those mental data you can also uh, insert mental data etc reference skills the time information etc so here let's say we want to insert the spatial reference so let's click spatial reference okay you need to drag a box uh, so all the spatial reference will be populated here uh, so you can choose which information do you want so let's say i just want the name so i delete everything else okay and for this one i want that to be smaller so i go to format and i choose the size to be uh, 16. okay so now you can see we we added the speech reference from the uh, dynamic text uh, let's also insert something else so for example we want to, i want to manually in type something so i drag a rectangle uh, where I want to type the uh, the data source, okay? So data source. So the data source we used the data from the gun violence archive to geocode those points. So I just provide the data source as this one. Uh, you can also add the other data sources like where did you where did we get the the population information which is from living editors and uh, if you like you can also provide information like the author name etc okay uh, you can also change the format so let's say we also want to keep that one to be 16. all right uh, lastly let's say we want to insert a border okay um, I think that is in the rectangle here. So click the rectangle. So you want to add a rectangle that, okay, just close to cover everything that um, of our maps, which is border. Or you can also consider that a neat line that surrounds all our map elements. Um, I think we call we can also change the symbols. So. And I think one point black is fine. However, so we may also want uh, to double check. So we want to zoom in uh, to check the details. So especially like here. Okay. So uh, we may want to make the locate map smaller so that will not be outside of this border. Okay, so let's select the locator map again. So if you want, if you cannot select the locator map from here, you can. What you can do is you can just select the uh, locator map um, on the left. Those map borders. And let's zoom in. So let's put this a little bit smaller so that we can make sure everything is within. Uh, the map border. Okay, and next, let's clear all the uh, guidelines. So let's right click uh, and also remove all the guides. Okay, so that is how our map looks like. And if you are happy with this one, so you can save the project and go to share where you can print out your map or you can share your map to ArcGIS Online 
or you can export your map as a digital document. So let's say we want to export that one. We want to export that one as a PDF. And we want to export to uh, this OneDrive folder. Okay. And you can give it a name. I call it Lab 10 Map. Okay. And you have the other options. Let's say resolution. So I think 150 will be enough. Um, qualities, etc. And um, I think everything's fine. So now I just export. Okay, uh, one thing you have to keep in mind that make sure you will be able to find out where the map will be exported. So because right now we are still working on the app stream, so the map will be saved on app stream. And also if you choose OneDrive folders, the map will, will be saved on OneDrive folder that's through app stream. Okay, and now you can see it is success. Uh, you cannot view it. Uh, the reason is because when I set up the MPTS on AppStream, I didn't install an Adobe or PDF reader, so you cannot view it. However, so if now we go to outside of this ArcGIS Pro, so if we go back to go to um, AppStream and go to OneDrive, that is where I saved uh, this PDF document. Okay, and you will be able to see that, okay, this PDF is here. So uh, it is now saved to OneDrive folder. So if you open OneDrive folder from your local computer, you will see that. Or another way is that you can download that one from AppStream. App so let's download that one. And let's open that. Okay, and so now you can see this is a map. So it has a title, um, a semantic map, a locator map, uh, 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 a chart, a space reference, data source, and also the map folder. Of course, you can add or change the other stuff, but make sure you do have those required elements. For example, the so north arrows or the directions, um, talk about directions and also scale bar and also legend, okay? 